it. How many in here has just been waiting on God for an answer for something? I mean, you just feel like God's given you a, a promise, and you're just kind of, you know, holding on, waiting for it. And um, but uh, let me let me just drop a little thought in your heart here. This is a story of a blind man who was born blind. It wasn't that he had his eyesight and he lost it. He was born in this condition. And so when Jesus passed by and saw him, his disciples said, Master, who sinned this man or his parents that he'd be born blind? Well, how can a baby sin? I mean, what a stupid question anyway, right? Yeah. I mean, who sinned this man or his parents? I mean, he's a baby. He was born blind. Some, some people could ask crazy religious yeah. questions, can't they? I mean, they don't even have any reasoning to them. All right, and Jesus said neither. First of all, he couldn't see and he was a baby. And his parents didn't do it. And then he made a statement, but God can manifest a work in him. God can take this opportunity to show his power in this young man's life. So let me ask you a question today. What are you struggling with that God could, be, could manifest his power? And just show himself strong to you. Yes, yes. Now a lot of times we look at these things as being so negative and such an impact to us. That we want to run. And you know, and we want to excuse it. Or we want to accept it. But if there is something that is a disadvantage in your life. If there is something that's hindering you. If there is something that's challenged you. If there's something you think you've got to live with that's not very comfortable. Why don't you take it to Jesus? Amen. And as Pastor said this morning, go on the offense. Take the word of God and say, God, you promised me that this could change right. if I would believe you because nothing is impossible with you. Nothing. So let's get it changed. Yes. Yes. Now you can sit and accept it right. and suffer throughout your life yes. or you can come to the word of God and to yes. Jesus and say, I know in whom I believe that I am persuaded that he is able Hallelujah. to do that which I've committed unto him. It's up to you. Yes, Lord. He's up to you. And so Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it's day. The night comes when no man can work. And then he said, as long as I'm in the world, heaven knows that he's in the world. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit. I know he's not a right yeah. person. But he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit back and he's going to do the work. Yeah. So he's at work in our lives. He said, uh, you know, he's the light of the world through us. Yeah. And then he did a little strange, out of the ordinary, something. He said, come here. So he came here and he just spit on the ground, made him a little mud pie, you know. Now, how unconventional is that? How crazy is that? I mean, the man can't see now. You've got to remember, he don't know, he don't know if Jesus is spitting where he's spitting. And he don't know where he got the mud. He don't know how he made the mud. But how many knows when a person has a disability like blindness, their ears pick up the sound of the voice. He really had no way of seeing to believe him. He had to hear it. Yeah. Hear me now. He had to hear it to believe it. Yeah. Did you hear it? Yeah. Faith comes how? By seeing it or by hearing. hearing? He had to hear it to believe it. You've got to open up your spiritual ears and start hearing there may be blindness, spiritual blindness, and it might even be some um, physical blindness. But spiritual blindness is the worst kind. Yes. But get you, tune up your ears a little bit. Tune up your ears and listen. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay, and gnawed the eyes of the blind man, and said, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Now he said, Which is by interpretation what? So he sent him somewhere. See, the man understood what the pool of Salon meant. It means go. Get on the road. Get going. I know that obedience is an act of faith. I mean, your faith has to understand that. But did you know that you can obey? He didn't see Jesus. He didn't even know who it was. Read on the story. He said, I don't know who he was. All I said was, once I was blind, 
All I can tell you, once I'm blind and now I see. And the man that did it to me said, go wash and I came seeing. That's the only thing I can tell you. I don't have any great knowledge of who this man was. In fact, I've never seen him. Never seen him. Never seen him. But what did he do? He obeyed. What is God telling you in your circumstances as you seek him to change that circumstances in your life? What would God speak to you to do? And then if you do it, whether it's unconventional, whether it's out of character, whether it's just plain crazy to the flesh, to the natural or not, but I'm promising you this, if you will do it, what will happen? He will, he will do his part, right? Okay, so here's the story. <clears throat> so he went down. Now the pool of Siloam, was, was kind of a downgrade to him. He had to go from where he was, kind of down, go. But he, he'd been used to navigating blind, so either he had a guide or he got down there, right? He went down rather than went up. Sometimes, here's the spiritual significance of it, in order to get your healing, you've got to go down. You've got to humble yourself. Yes. yes. Good word. Humble yourself. Go down. Humble word. yourself. And when you get washed in the presence of God, you're going to get up and come see Him. The Bible said when He went and washed, He went and He came. Everybody say, came, came. seeing. Came seeing. See, that's, that's the plan of God. We've got to humble ourselves in the presence of God. And therefore, we can be washed and we can come seeing. I know... You can read the rest of the story. But that's the, that's the impact of the message. Is that we will humble ourselves. We don't have to see to believe. You've got to accept the word. A lot of people say, well, I, I don't see God. I, I don't hear God. It's right here. On, on this week, the first of the week, uh, Kylie asked me, said, or Jojo, we call her, said, uh, when is church? And I said, Wednesday night. Well, how many more days is that? I said, well, this is such a day. It'll be Wednesday. She said, okay. Before we go to church on Wednesday, I said, we're going to take, and she kind of struggled with the word communion, but we finally got that word straightened out, come out right, communion. And um, so she said, we're going to sit down at the table before we go to church, and we're going to all write down what we want to thank God for, and then we're going to take communion, and then we'll get ready to go to church. This is coming from a seven-year-old child. No prompting from me, no prompting from her granddad. She did it. So, come Wednesday, she said, is this Wednesday going? Yes. She said, come on, let's go. She gives us all a piece of paper, got us a pencil. So we had to sit down and we had to write. Of course, you know, us, Bill and I, we wrote a whole page. But she wrote these words. And it was just awesome. I didn't tell her what to write. I didn't even say, you know, everybody was, she wrote her own thoughts down. She said, the first thing she said, Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your word so we can learn about you. And isn't that awesome from a seven-year-old child? If a seven-year-old has got her heart that tuned to God, what about us? God has purposes and plans for all of us. You are not a mistake. <laughs> You, you are not a mistake. The enemy would like to thank you, make you think you know you're a mistake, but you're not. You are so special to God that He created you and me in His own image and likeness. Amen. You are very important to God, and you have a plan and a purpose for God. God has something for you to do. God has something He wants you to be, and God has something He wants to bless you with. Amen. Amen? So what are we going to do? We're, we may not see him. We may not be able to physically understand his methods or his ways. But if you'll just be obedient, you will come see him. And it's such a wonderful thing to know him in a revelation. Amen. I'm going to give this last word of testimony. All night long I dreamed about the coming of the Lord. I dreamed that in, in the midst of just before his coming, there was a great persecution that hit the church. 
And as the, the persecution rose greater, and our first thoughts were to hide in my dream. My first thought, well, let's find a hiding place. You know, where they don't find us. But then, the real truth kicked in. They'll find us. The thing for you to do is just be bold and stand strong. Because it won't be long until that trumpet will sound. And then we'll go home to be with Him. Amen. So I know we're getting close to the coming of the Lord. But allow the Lord, know how much, how unconventional it may be, to open your eyes and get busy just, just being who God wants you to be. You know, you don't have to worry about what you're going to do. Just be what God wants you to be. And then you will do whatever it is He wants you to do because... He's going to make the provision for you, right? The most important thing, and let me stress this one more time, as pastor comes, would you stand and welcome your pastor to the pulpit? He just wants you to be, just be what God wants.